Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. We're just waiting for uh, us to achieve a quorum to start the meeting. So uh, if uh, we should start in a few moments and I'll come back on when I'm advised by the Secretariat, we have, we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, hello, any 
Can anybody hear me in this call? This is Cornelia. Hi, Cornelia. This is Malcolm. We can hear you loud and clear. We're just waiting to achieve a quorum and then we're going to start. OK, thanks so much. Thank you. Hi, Cornelia. This is Alan. I can hear you too. Okay, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, every, uh, colleagues. Uh, this is the penultimate day of XCOM 12, uh, and welcome to all members and observers. Uh, today we will be considering item 7B and 7C, uh, and we're aware that there may be some overlap in, in this discussion. 
Uh, and the first one is item 7B, which is about fostering publication, uh, public education and awareness raising. So this is largely about awareness raising and about making sure people understand and know about uh, what's going on, on uh, uh, about loss and damage. And there's a background document which uh, I'm sure you have all uh, read and, and seen, so I'm not going to go through it. Uh, and there is a slide to help you remind you of the process to date and perhaps if that could come up on the screen uh, and while it is coming up on the screen. Um, so the parties have requested XCOM um, to actually foster public education um, uh, and to do that. <laughs> make sure that in terms of capacity building that's sort of built into that and uh, at XCOM 11 we did think a little bit about that um, and the background paper talks of that a little bit um, but I think some of the, the there weren't that many views that came in according to the background paper um, and so uh, the co-chair's suggestion as indicated in that background paper is largely at the moment to uh, mobilize uh, organizations who can help on this and through our observers uh, to try uh, advance the use and application of Exicon products uh, and see what they can do to help with uh, public public awareness um, about loss and damage. And so uh, we have a proposed approach to this item, uh, which is going to come up on your screens at the mo very shortly. Um, and this is really largely for us as an XCOM to, to listen to observers as to for their input uh, on what they have and what they know and what they can suggest uh, and what they're doing or in terms of uh, awareness raising uh, uh, through those the vulnerable the people up on the screen so it's contact points uh, communities policymakers and the private sector. Uh, and it says it talks there about pledges for further re relevant actions, but really it's about uh, sharing what, what is being done and what, what more might be done in the future uh, to actually uh, raise awareness. And then I think that then the idea for the XCOM is for us to, to listen very carefully to what everybody uh, is saying and to use that information to inform future work and indeed as expert groups are established. Um, to feed that information in to uh, help the, the work of the expert group. Um, is that, uh, for members, is that an acceptable way forward? Are there any interventions before I turn to observers uh, and uh, get their reaction and their ideas as to how best we can start uh, doing better at fostering awareness raising? So the floor is open to members to respond to the proposal of how we deal with this item. And as as before, uh, don't feel you have to say anything. Um, uh, no hand means you think this is a fantastic idea, but I see far hand, please. If you're talking for hand, you're on mute. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I was having actually difficulty unmuting myself. Um, good uh, morning, colleagues, and afternoon and evening, everyone. It, it's, I'm glad to see everyone is able to join again uh, this morning. Just uh, very briefly here is, is just to say um, to, to share with my uh, fellow members that uh, I think there's some of the, I appreciate the, the work that the co-chairs have put into the document uh, here, and, and, I, and I do look forward to hearing from observers, um, their reactions and, and, and ideas uh, on this matter. Um, I do think that the language in the, in the note uh, on the suggestions the way forward uh, should be adjusted slightly. I think um, the, the as, as you mentioned, the, the, the this concept of pledges is a little bit strange in, in, in this context, and I think um, you know, we, we could we could work on the language a little bit here to make it clear that uh, what we're hoping to have is these organizations discuss and, and provide further information about how they they, they you know are and, and will support uh, uh, the integration of, of loss and damage considerations. 
um, into, into their programs and, and curricula. And, and I think the, uh, you know, we, we should be careful here about some of the language that's reflected in the report. Uh, and, and so I'll be happy to share um, some specific uh, wording proposals with uh, the Secretariat and, and members um, this afternoon. Thank you. OK, thank you for hand. So I understand that uh, your your concern is to really to to clarify that what we're asking for is for people to provide information on what they are doing and what they will do uh, in t in terms of this awareness raising, um, which is with I think the, the meat of the suggestion from the co-chairs, but your uh, concern about the use of the word pledge is noted and we look forward to your uh, your wording um, suggestions. Are there any other members of the XCOP who'd like to take the floor? I don't see any hands and you're going to have to be quick because I'm going to give maximum time for our observers to uh, intervene here. Nadal, please. Thank you so much, Malcolm, and sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, only just I'm uh, also considering the con the connection between what we are talking about and what the AS platform, the action and the uh, support, the, the the action platform under the NFTC, the S sort of uh, action for climate empowerment, which they are really working in the same areas which we are talking about the issues of awareness raising, education, curriculum, uh, access to the information. I think it is very important to have some kind of connection and coordination between the XCOM and the, what we are doing here and the XCOM and what they are uh, doing and how they may help us doing uh, and uh, delivering our uh, mandate with regard to the issue of awareness and uh, uh, education. Thank you. OK, thank you, Nadal. So that that's noted. Um, I'm not sure we don't have anyone from ACE in in the uh, observer group. Oh, the secretary can tell me that. Uh, but uh, if we don't, that's certainly something that I'm sure we can we can think about. If there are no more uh, XCOM members who wish to take the floor at this stage, and I don't see any hands, can I please turn to the observers? And the question here is, what are you doing uh, and what more will you do uh, in terms of uh, raising public awareness uh, such that we can uh, think uh, best about what and to feed into what the XCOM is doing. So the floor is open um, for what you're doing and ideas and that sort of thing. I'm not seeing any hands, but that don't know. Oh, oh, there's some hands down here. Oh, this system is very odd. Um, so, uh, the, the order in which they've appeared on my screen, um, which of course may or not be may or may not be the um, the order that you put them up, is is Colin McQuiston, please first. Thank you very much, and good morning, afternoon, and evening to everybody. Um, so, if you feel comfortable, it's always nice to have the person talking turn on their camera. Okay, I'm happy to do that. There we are. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm speaking on behalf of the Climate Action Network um, to provide some input. Um, as the discussion would like to highlight in the uh, draft document that was shared, which was not highlighted, and that is the uh, the Santiago Network, which was agreed at COP25 as, as part of the mandate of the work of the uh, the WIM and the UNFCCC more, more broadly. Um, I think the uh, the role that the Santiago Network can play in particularly in, in catalyzing um, information, knowledge sharing, facilitating understanding of loss and damage is, is vital. Uh, and I'd like to see I'd like to see the the XCOM consider more the role that the that the, um, the Santiago Network can. A comment on the uh, on the draft document that was shared. I think 
I mean, thought leadership is something that we also need to be thinking about. Um, how do you how how can we empower the the, the XCOM to be as broad and representative as possible? So and I, sorry, one moment, one moment, Colin. There's somebody who is not muted who is typing loudly. The person who's not muted, could they please mute? And if it's you typing, Colin, can you stop? It's certainly not me typing. Right. <laughs> I can't type and speak at the same time. <laughs> Please carry on. Sorry. OK, uh, so yes, the role of the XCOM uh, facilitating a broad and inclusive a debate as possible. Um, finally, what are we doing? Um, the the a, a group of, of civil society organisations uh, within Climate Action Network and more broadly as well um, have developed a, uh, a propositional document around the Santiago network based on a survey that was given out to XCOM and focal points around the world. Um, that document I think gives some very good ideas of, of how uh, the XCOM some, can support better uh, awareness raising, understanding, uh, knowledge generation around the broad uh, concept of loss and damage, avert, minimise and address. Um, and uh, that has been shared, I think, with all the XCOM members uh, prior to this meeting. Um, final point is uh, we tend to, in the meetings and in the discussions, to focus on, focus on the operational aspects. And, and we need, I think, to get more about uh, implementation. Yes, it's great to, we, we know that it's a prerequisite that we need to build understanding around loss and damage at all levels. But we also, I think, need to be building that understanding with an, with an understanding that it will lead to something. So the issue around action support, I think, is vital. Um, building capacity to mobilise that action and support so that we can actually start delivering for the communities on the front line of climate impacts. So thank you very much for that opportunity for our init initial input. Thank you. My understanding is that the the Santiago network is is being formed under the is the presidency and the parties, and that's what's what's going to be form the Santiago network. So uh, I'm assuming you that Colin, you have also sent your your paper through to the secretariat so they can make sure that it's made available to the right people. Yes, it has been. So, okay. Thank you, and uh, it's good to hear that there's, you're doing some more on, on that. So, um, Donna, please. Uh, Donna, if you're talking, you're on mute. Donna appears to have disappeared. OK. Uh Colleagues, I don't see any hands at all. Um, I've got uh, Donna's got some technical problems. It seems if she's a, a, a DL. Um, so I am not seeing any more hands from observers on ideas on what they're doing on uh, fostering awareness on on loss and damage. I'm sure you guys do something. Uh, Secretariat, are you aware of any other hands that are up that I can't see? This is Mila from the Secretariat. We don't see any other hands. Over. OK, uh, well, if um, if there are no, if there are no other interventions from observers on what they're doing uh, in terms of fostering public awareness raising, that could help the XCOM in their deliberations and the expert groups. Um, must say that's a little disappointing. Um, 
But if that's the case, uh, and none of the observers wish to, wish to uh, OK, so I understand that FAO is trying to switching screens here. Uh, Donna says they'll send our inputs and FAO will provide some written inputs as well. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Um, and I am not sure whether if there are no other hands, I think we can move on to the next item. And I will close this item. Unless there are any objections on doing that, I will close this item and I will hand over to Dawn for the next item. Um, and she will take us through. Okay, oh, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're very happy to listen to you guys, um, but uh, if you prefer to do it in writing, that's also fine. Um, and so, Seeing no more requests from the floor, uh, I would like to hand over to Dawn, who will do the next item. Dawn. Thank you, co-chair. Thank you, colleagues, observers. Good morning from Seleucia. Uh, it's good to have all of you here again with us. So let's uh, go through the items. We do recognize that the two uh, sets of items, that is the one just covered by my co-chair um, in terms of awareness raising, and this one on sharing of knowledge and experience, there are some overlaps um, in the areas. Uh, we're hoping to hear from you, whether um, in this live session, but also, you, of course, you have the opportunity to be able to uh, send your, your inputs in writing as, um, as you've done in the past. So as we know, um, 7C, item 7C is on the modalities for fostering the sharing of relevant knowledge and experience among practitioners and vulnerable countries in an interactive and practical manner. Uh, of course, you are aware that, uh, that we do have the, the background document on this. Um, that you would have seen. I'm going to just take a few minutes as before just to quickly run through the background document before we actually run through this slide that's on the screen at the moment. You would have seen from the background document that what we're trying to do is to determine how to share better, how to ensure that in sharing better we can reach those that we need to reach and we could uh, collaborate and, and with, with the persons and, and the, the experts out there in terms of the work that is being done to help us to become more effective in what we're doing. In terms of the mandate, of course, we know that during the 2019 review of the WIM, um, parties looked at the need to enhance the relevant uh, relevance of use and usefulness and dissemination of outputs. We also know that um, we were encouraged to communicate these outputs in a format or in formats that are easy to translate adapt and access in different contexts and that was critical because of course we have different contexts we're talking about different regional groups we're talking about different parts of the world and even within countries we have um, variations as well we also of course had uh, raised the issue in terms of mandates um, coming out of the 2019 WIM review the need to identify modalities for fostering the sharing of this relevant knowledge and experience among practitioners and importantly among a vulnerable groups again the reference to it being interactive and practical remains um key uh, and this one, um, I might say, might be particularly dear to my heart, but it is the whole idea of <clears throat> collaborating with relevant organizations and stakeholders. And that is in a way that that is through partnerships. <clears throat> Many of you are aware of, of the work that we've done, for example, in the task force of this um, for displacement in partnering with a number of organizations to help us to further the work. We, we need to be able to build on all those synergies that are happening, um, all those synergies, all the work that is happening out there to ensure that our work 
um, can reach as many as possible in a as in a useful way. So this is why the partnerships. If you look at the your, the background paper and mandates number two, in terms of partnerships in developing and dis and disseminating the products that support national focal points, that support loss and damage contact points and relevant entities. So again, those partnerships are important um, to us to help us to be able to have that catalytic effect that we talk about as an XCOM. So um, the, the process to date is already reflected on the slide. If you could put up the slide again, um, Miwa, please. Um, and of course, you know that in terms of the process to date, we have parties, uh, we know that parties in the decision to uh, slash CMA.2 requested the XCOM to identify those modalities for fostering and sharing of this relevant knowledge and experience among the practitioners and vulnerable countries, as I mentioned earlier. So in response to that, uh, members shared those views at XCOM 11 um, on effective modalities for communicating the knowledge produced. Uh, they collected and synthesized um, that information that was taken by the XCOM. We did that um, in the various thematic groups to the targeted practitioners and vulnerable countries and potential target users, audience of the XCOM, <clears throat> knowledge products within the, the vulnerable countries. Um, again, the background paper that you have shows those synthesis of the views that were shared um, initially among XCOM members. So I won't go into, into it other than to reference that um, you would note that the point that we have in the background paper about loss and damage covering a range of thematic areas and that many of the organizations um, have the relevant expertise and might I, might I add the resources to be able to help um, to inform the planning and implementation of the underground activities. In fact, I would say a number of those organizations, a number of those uh, organizations have registered uh, for observer participation for XCOM 12. So you are here with us. So we are really counting on this um, collaboration, this partnership um, to be able to capitalize and have that uh, catalytic effect that we're talking about. So some of you have seen some of the, the, the inputs that were the, made um, in terms of the, the national focal points and the decision makers uh, at the national and local level, the private sector executives, the academics, the civil uh, society organizations, and of course the general public. But also in terms of suggested communication modalities, speaking of um, applying our existing platforms, you are aware of the platforms we have, such as the Fiji Clearinghouse and the Risk Talk and other platforms under the UNFCCC. Um, of course, the, the normal virtual means such as webinars, etc. But being able to also engage uh, with the WIM XCOM in its current partner organizations that is inclusive of all of you and being able to even consider attaching our communication strategy because we do have the, a communication strategy um, to the XCOM's work plan as a way to be able to ensure that there is visibility in it as we continue to, to use it and draw from it as we move forward. So. So basically, the XCOM would like to be able to foster further efforts in knowledge sharing. As I mentioned again, again, I keep saying an interactive and practical manner. So similar to the last agenda item that was just uh, brought forward by my by my co-chair, the XCOM would like to hear from you, the observers, as to um, what you're doing in terms of that kind of sharing um, and how you could contribute towards enhancing efforts for sharing of information that is relevant uh, to the loss and damage context. Um, bearing in mind much of what um, exists, like the, the Fiji um, platform that I mentioned earlier on, or um, the Fiji Clearinghouse, sorry, the Risk Talk and other platforms, but also noting what you're doing. So I've already mentioned some of the audiences that have been um, uh, mentioned by the XCOM members in the coalition that was done, which is in the background paper that you do have. Um, again, um, I'm asking the XCOM members, of course, to take note of, of all of that, um, and of course, everyone to take note to help us with the future work. So at this point, what I would like to do is to invite uh, our observers, um, those first to be able to share with us 
on, on those items, but also to be able to those who are in a position to be able to do so, uh, we invite um, input um, action. I do note the comment made um, earlier by an XCOM member on the use of the word pledges, but you do get the idea of being able to, to invite um, that kind of um, effort for the sharing of information in an interactive and pra practical manner um, to those specific target audiences that I referenced earlier. Um, just before I go on, I, I see, I think I see Sumaya. So Sumaya, please take the floor. Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Poon. I hope that you will be able to hear me because I had difficulty hearing you and I kept on using your voice all the time. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you. You're breaking up a little bit in between, but I'm hearing you. Um. Okay, thank you. Um, I, yes, I see, that's I see the, Thank you. I see the issue of um, uh, uh, sharing of knowledge, uh, particularly as related to the uh, the knowledge product produced by the by the Exocom on the under the different work stream was very important issue. Uh, while I see a very good and important role for observer, I also see a very good role for the Exocom itself uh, in engaging the uh, focal points because. Uh, we had a very long and extensive discussion during education on the issue of knowledge product and how they could be, they need to be utilized by countries. So um, uh, I see um, them being used for training of um, loss and damage focal point. Um, uh, I, I see that this process could also be done by observer if they wish. But uh, and the U and the Exocom, I see that would be a very good um, way of uh, engaging the the focal point. Uh, the, not the focal point. I'm talking about the the loss and damage focal point, not the UNFCC focal point. So um, I guess that that would uh, enable uh, the because uh, if we think about the, the the guidance, technical guidance that are going to be produced the methodologies and general guidance. There is a lot of information already being created and it's not automatic that countries just take them and apply them. There is an issue of uh, information sharing, um, communication. However, there is also issue of addressing the challenge to the countries because not all the countries are on the same uh, page. Many um, countries on the issue of loss and damage is still require uh, capacity building to in order to benefit from the uh, knowledge products products that are uh, available and existing. Thank you. Thank you for this, um, Sumaya, and that is a, a, a good point in terms of the capacity building element of this agenda item, noting that it is yes on fostering public education and awareness efforts, including efforts with a capacity building component at the regional, national and local level. But thank you for, for drawing attention to it. And as you indicated, it is uh, there is a whole different context when we speak about um, not different parts of the world, but also even within countries and, and within members. We, you know, there are different. The context is different, so there needs to be capacity building and training, etc., to be able to um, to see how we could better share knowledge and experience and understanding. And, and this is, of course, the importance of being able to have those partnerships and that collaboration with our um, our various organizations, including the observer uh, uh, groups and members at this meeting. Um, I did see a hand, that, but it's no longer there. I'm just double checking. Um, N. A. Nasser. Yes, thank you, okay. John. Uh, right. Nasser uh, Al Sharif from Kuwait. Okay. Uh, I agree with what uh, Sumaya just said about the raising the public awareness and capacity building. We, as developing countries, 
we might we don't have that such a knowledge or such uh, awareness in our countries unless it's a national circumstances or a crisis uh like here what we have like in this pan uh, pandemic of covid 19 that no one was like knows no like in the beginning of the crisis nobody knows how to deal with it and now after like having uh, or after suffering of like this pandemic uh of seven months i think that now everyone he has a knowledge or might be an experiment experience with the uh, with the situation that that's the thing that uh, I want to uh, specify in our countries. Uh, another example, like when we had when we had in Kuwait the red tide, which affected the fishery in uh, in the Gulf. Nobody like had such an uh, experience of what happened after like. A after like several months, then we understood what is what happened with the red tide after we shared our knowledge with other countries. Uh, the public awareness probably, as I said, it's not going to be such in some of our countries because we don't have that capacity building. We don't have such uh, classes or uh, in, in the education system talking about what uh, our country is suffering either with fishery or uh, like in a farmer sector or sea coastal sector. That's what we are facing in developed countries. That's what we need from developed countries to help us to raise that awareness, to give to give their example to the developing countries so we can raise uh, such an awareness to environment and climate change. Uh, as some of our colleagues said, uh, the civil society, they have some uh, activities, uh, but like it's not that well uh, published or uh, spoken in the media. So maybe we have to raise such an awareness or help the civil, the, the civil societies on raising that awareness in our countries uh, as a development country. Uh, I have some other points for the report of the XCOM, but I think that it's going to be either uh, later in today or maybe tomorrow. So I will, I will uh, stop by, by now and raise it after. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anasa. Yes, the, the XCOM report um, points would have to be at a, a later time. Of course, we're always encouraging persons to also send in uh, the submission. So just to make sure that your submission doesn't get missed because of, of limited time online, feel free to send that in. Um, but thank you for, for bringing home um, some of those points in terms of some practical examples of the challenges that you experience um, at home. Um, suddenly there, there is a, a role for the XCOM in trying to help with awareness raising and sharing of information where loss and damage is concerned. But of course, we also have that role. Uh, I, I like to think of it like an octopus, the whole catalytic effect of being able to, to work with all those uh, through those existing modalities and other ones we may not have thought of to be able to reach uh, countries. So we may not be able as an XCOM to physically or, or, or impact on the ground in a particular country. But we can, of course, uh, help through our interactions, through our collaborations, through our partnerships with organizations, so with experts, with technical groups, with persons who are doing the kind of work um, on loss and damage. Uh, you, you also endorse Sumaya's point in terms of the need to be able to have that capacity building and training and understanding. So that role of our loss and damage contact points, we recall that we have those loss and damage contact points uh, that parties asked us to um, establish. And I think um, so far we have approximately 34 countries that have established those loss and damage contact points. And uh, it would be important for um, all the countries to be able to try to get those established because that's an avenue right there for taking the information that is coming out of this UNFCCC process, the, coming from the XCOM as well, coming from the very 
various plans of actions that will be done by the non-economic losses group, the slow onset and events, the comprehensive risk management, the, the expert um, group action and support expert group as well, uh, the task force for displacement and taking all of that information and being able to filter it down to the ground through our loss and damage contact points and the focal points as well in a manner that it becomes palatable in a manner that it, it fits the particular context of that particular region, that particular region or that particular country. Um, and of course, um, again, raising the important point in terms of um, having those building on those partnerships for the collaboration, partnerships both in developing products and disseminating products. The kind of partnerships we saw happen with our task force for displacement. Wouldn't it be great if it also happened with knowledge um, products and communication and dissemination to allow us to be able to reach those different regional groupings and the, the different contexts. So thank you very much for that, Nasser. Um, I think I also see, let me just make sure that I'm seeing right. We have Sandip, WWF, do I have that correct? Uh, yeah, that's true. And thanks, Don. And uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And good morning, everybody. And thank you, Coach, uh, uh, for allowing me to speak on. So uh, I'm Sandeep Samning Rai. I work for WF International, but today I'm making this intervention on behalf of CAN, the Climate Action Network. So, uh, Coach, you mentioned before that, uh, or you asked about what we are doing in the ground from from a of different organizations doing on the ground. Like what Arling men, uh, mentioned in his, in his chat, that as a can, we are a global organization with 1,200 organizations working differently. And there is a lot of loss and damage activities that we are doing on the ground. Just to give a name, for example, doing national labor loss and damage assessment, what our can, I would say, uh, civil society network doing in Nepal, some of the loss and damage that is happening in South Asian region, like, like our, our can notes is doing a lot of activities on the ground and it will be really hard to list all of them until all those activities in one go, unless and until we have a kind of structured approach in terms of different thematics and 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 making those call by the ID, either by the XCOM or can that could be a part of the, the Santiago network, which is this is coming forward. So I think I think that's the key because sometimes having too much information and is also a troublesome in terms of managing those information. So I think we need to have a coherent approach or structure approach that will allow to put more information much more comprehensive way and that can be able to reach to the label where we are right now talking of. And second thing, um, what we also really strongly feel is that Having those knowledge is one thing, and but our ultimate objective is utilization of those knowledge. So, and for the utilization of the knowledge, definitely we need a much more, I would say, extensive work in terms of how to build the capacity of those people, uh, and also have the adequate resources to utilize those knowledge that has been generated either in different thematic theme or either in based on different geographical location. And utilizing those knowledge is also one key aspect. I think that we definitely need to address on that part. And Don, you mentioned before that that in terms of the modality, one of the proposals is to establish the the I would say the WIM knowledge network of practitioners to channel the knowledge and the use of the existing platform like physical clearing house and risk stock and other things. I think that's also fine, but. Uh, the Santiago network is also one of the key decisions from the last cup. I think we also really need to see whether we can also bring Santiago network into this particular picture and see how we can better utilize that that new decision as well. And and my last point, um, it will be really good if the CSO organization could be a in a way in a structural way be able to use or uh, be a part of the platform or kind of mechanism that we can be able to be able, be able to share the information and knowledge that we generate in all different sec uh, in all different area for example i think this last few days uh WWF and practical action we produce a policy briefing which really talks about the anchoring loss and damage into the ndc enhancement process and we have been sharing that information i will put that uh, report link 
uh, in the chat. But we as a civil society, uh, we are also doing a lot of activities, mostly on different at the field level. Uh, but, uh, and also time consuming to list all those activities unless and until there is a structure or coherent approach. And if there is also a kind of call from the WIM or WIM or from or from the Santiago network or, or whatever process that could be that we will be able to put those information in one one places. So let me stop there and happy to contribute for the further discussion and thanks for this opportunity. Thank you so much, San Sandeep. Um, I understand that your comment was being made um, on behalf of CAN. Uh, lots of information that you've provided here, um, both in terms of what uh, you guys are doing, but also in terms of opportunities to go beyond simply the, uh, the modalities that we have, such as the uh, risk transfer and, and the different platforms that we have. Um, so basically, you know, hearing a lot of, of what you're saying in terms of the activity on the ground, in terms of the national level and all of the other activities that are happening, the need to have a structured report in terms of the uh, thematic areas either prepared by the XCOM or through, you mentioned the Santiago, Santiago network. Of course, we know at this point uh, the only mandate we have um, for now uh, on the Santiago network is to receive um, those reports from the organizations and groups and experts from the Santiago network submitted to the XCOM and for the XCOM to consider the relevant information for inclusion in its report. Uh, of course, we know it's early days yet in terms of the Santiago network. Um, I think my, my co-chair referenced the earlier a survey that was done, um, um, that was uh, sent out on behalf of the uh, Secretariat, um, sent that out on behalf of the Presidency. And uh, we were happy, uh, my part from Selenosha, to be able to complete that. So we're hoping that, of course, the Santiago Network shapes up into something that is very useful. And as we go forward and as parties give us potentially more of a mandate to, to work with that group, we, we will. For now, the only mandate that we have on, as an XCOM is to receive um, those reports and to consider the relevant information um, from those reports for inclusion in our in our reports. But definitely keeping an eye on, on what's going on with that. Um, you, you reference, of course, the, the more intensive work to build the capacity to use the knowledge that has been developed. Um, you know, you you, spoke, you gave a lot of information, the importance of civil society organizations, which also NASA referenced earlier, um, to be part of the platform to facilitate the knowledge and, and information in a coherent manner. So I'm not attempting to summarize everything you've said, but you, you did raise some points, and I'm sure the Secretariat um, is taking note of all those inputs that can be deliberated upon further um, by uh, the XCOM members. I have Donna from I, um, IFRC. Donna, I understand that you are also having some challenges earlier without making your intervention too long, um, because we're saying no more than three minutes on an intervention. Um, I will allow you to intervene on the previous item as well as this one. Um, not to set a precedent, everyone, because there was an opportunity to have that, but because Donna had requested the floor and was not able to make the intervention. So Donna, if you are able to Come in now. You could make it both on that previous one and this one because you had intervened on the on the previous. So go ahead, Donna. Okay, I, I think Donna is still having uh, challenges. Okay, uh, I'm just double checking that. So in the meantime, I'm just give me a second. Let me just ensure that I'm not missing any hands. So first I see two XCOM members uh, either to, to provide information or to some reactions. Antonio, please come in. Thank you very much, uh, Co-Chair, and uh, good morning, uh, good evening, and good afternoon, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I was uh, reflecting on 
the intervention made by Nasser from Kuwait uh, regarding uh, the lack of knowledge uh, of what's going on regarding loss and damage on our countries. Uh, and and I, I was thinking that uh, it is uh, important for us not to take for granted that uh, our uh, academies, our uh, universities are really uh, aware and, and taking uh, into their uh, curricula and, and programs that are developing uh, within their different careers, the issue of, of, of loss and damage. And, and, and so uh, we need to look for some ways to promote uh, uh, knowledge sharing where wherever uh, we might have this uh, knowledge and and i was thinking that uh, what we don't have so far for instance is the uh, database of uh, the kind of program for of or curricula that uh, uh, universities in developed countries are undertaking uh, to address uh, uh, Coastal uh, issues in in, in uh, regarding loss and damage or desertification or uh, non-economic losses. Uh, the of, of issues regarding loss and damage. So it it will be a, a very important uh, uh, activity to try to as well promote or develop a kind of uh, a network of universities to really uh, help uh, share information to, to, to improve the ways we are uh, promoting and accelerating the knowledge uh, uh, regarding the impacts of, of, of loss and damage. So I, I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Antonio. I'm um, building on the, the point raised by NASA in terms of, you know, having that limited understanding on the ground where you see things happening that are loss and damage related and, and persons are unable to explain it or, or make the connections that we need. And uh, the importance, you said, of a database in terms of curricula in, develop, um, in, in, in the various countries, developed countries, etc., that can be used to assist in that kind of effort. Uh, I'm sure, again, the Secretariat has captured all of the points that you have raised, and I'm trying to take notes as well as, as listening. So um, this is um, useful, and we're collecting all of this to, to assist us in our work. Um, so uh, at this point, I see we have, let me just double check my listing. Fahan. Thank you, Don, and uh, I'll spare everyone uh, a picture of me. It's before 7 a.m. Uh, my time, um, <laughs> but uh, just to just to say here, um, uh, you know, we've heard both, in, I guess, under this item and the last item, you know, references to Santiago Network, and 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 I, I agree with your characterization of where we stand in regards to uh, the various mandates around around Santiago. Uh, but I do think that there, you know, we do have that mandate, of course, of, of having, uh, you know, or the, I guess the, not necessarily mandate, but the clarity uh, in the decision that says that the, the organizations that are participating in Santiago Network will will be reporting, uh, you know, to us uh, on their uh, on their activities. And I think there is uh, in that re in those reports, I think it, there is an opportunity for us to look and identify, um, you know. Uh, the ways to share knowledge across these organizations and, and understand how uh, what they're what they're doing, what, you know, what is working, and and how do we can uh, you know help identify opportunities for for doing more. So I think that's certainly a a modality and a place where we can we can look to is is the network itself and the reports that we get from it uh, as uh, as input into this work. Um, there's a couple other ideas. Uh, First, to, to respond to some of the, the the concerns that were raised by Nasser and and, and Antonio, I think um, the the uh, hopefully in the in the in the work that we're going to do uh, 
in the coming months and years on, on technical guides can get at some of the, the specific concerns that were raised where, where there's, you know, some very uh, good and in detailed knowledge out there. And, and, you know, we can certainly work in developing those guides to make sure that that knowledge is captured appropriately and and transmitted in a way that that is useful to uh, to countries as they confront challenges. Um, you know, getting universities uh, involved, I think Antonio's idea would be would be good, and then it'd be also uh, interesting to hear if if there are any observers from the Ringos uh, 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 on now that you know whether the, whether there is uh, has been any discussion amongst them um, about participating in, in some of the some of this work. Um, I think we should also uh, look and, and try and capture our experiences with uh, this virtual format. I mean, I, I will note that our um, our uh, number of uh, observers in this meeting is has is, is grown uh, much greater than we have in, in the past uh, in past meetings, and, and that's that's a good thing. And I think we should figure out how to to use these modalities of. Uh, sorry, my phone is waking me up now. Um, um, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, and then uh, finally, um, uh, uh, tell me the news of the day. Um, the uh, uh, okay, I'll stop there. Uh, I apologize for for the ending there, but um, just to say, uh, I think that there's a uh, um, a pretty uh, there's a, there's a diverse set of uh, of inputs that we could take into this work and, and modalities that we could take forward here. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for this, Farhan. Um, thank you for reflecting a, a bit on um, some inputs in terms of the Santiago network, um, but also the, the point made about the potential use of the guide um, going forward. That's one of the mandates that we had from Madrid. And, and of course, um, being able to, to work on the, the, the months and the years, as you said, we have a number of things that we'll be working on uh, in, in terms of the plans of actions um, for the NELS and the SOEs and the, those relating to action and support and the comprehensive risk management, as well as, of course, as the task force for displacement. So lots of opportunities to, to be able to do that. Um, at, at this point, I'm going to have the call the, the, the last um, two speakers and then I close the list. First, I have um, Jerome um, from the XCOM, followed by Daniel, and then uh, as from the Observer Group. Am I right um, in, in that? And then we have to close the list. Thank you. Jerome, you have the floor. Thank you, co-chair. Uh, this is just to recognize the points advanced by our colleagues, Somaya, uh, Antonio and Farhan, and of course some observers are highlighting the role of universities. And th this is actually very important because universities are actually the incubators for the indigenous knowledge that can answer how the how-tos, how-tos, uh, how to share, how to disseminate, how to monitor, how to evaluate, and how actually define the context of the information and communication strategies. By and large, uh, this uh, recognition opens up very much uh, leeway for us, for us to optimize the space, to work with some other uh, bodies uh, under the uh, UN system, for example, for exa uh, such as the PCCB, uh, technology mechanism, and so forth and so on. And um, the feedback from the observers would really be helpful in trying to make our work much more effective in adding value to the gains that we have achieved so far. Thank you, Co-Chair. Thank you, Jerome, um, for that um, point being made in supporting some of the previous points made by um, Antonio, Sumaya, Fahan, and others, um, and also bringing forward a few points. Um, a few more points, we, we were noting all of those. Just give me a, a minute, let me just double check something with my co-chair and secretariat. I will be right back.
uh, thank you colleagues uh, for, for your patience. So um, I'm seeing, am I, is, is Daniel still wanting to take the floor? Otherwise, um, I'm going to call on NASA as the last speaker. Yes, I'll, this is Daniel. Oh, this is Daniel. Okay, go ahead, Daniel. Thank you very much, co-chair. I um, appreciate that. Let me uh, turn on my video. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak again today. Um, I did want to come come in and, and highlight the comments that were made earlier um, in support of collaborating as much as possible under the mandates with the Santiago network. Uh, referencing some of the work that we're doing, uh, I work with uh, UN ASQA, which is the Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia in our Arab Center for Climate Change Policies. And um, we're working with the UNFCCC Secretariat supporting the Lima Adaptation Knowledge Initiative. We're supporting, we're, we're going to be supporting in a, in a couple of weeks, the first meeting on supporting the enhanced transparency framework in, at the regional level. And um, these are, are great ways to engage in more depth with the stakeholders at the national levels, particularly referring back to some of the challenges and uh, national focal points mentioned earlier this week. And I think it's important because uh, the, as there's more and more mechanisms, it's, it's taking a lot of work to engage with these networks to keep them active. Um, but when we do, they're a great way to consolidate information at the national level, uh, at the regional level to feed into global processes. So we're, of course, happy to discuss how we can support that process going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you so much um, for that. Um, I'm Daniel. I'm always happy to hear about opportunities for collaborating, for, for working, for holding our hands and helping us to have that catalytic effect. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm going to call on the last speaker. Um, let me just double check that this is the last speaker. Yes, indeed. Um, Nasser, you have the, the last word apparently before we close the speaker list. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and thanks for the, all the interactions after uh, my intervention. Uh, as for the uh, vocal context points for the for the loss and damage, uh, to be frankly, like uh, from the beginning of the WIM and the XCOM, I've been sharing and I've been joining these uh, negotiations. In the beginning, I did not understand what is the need or what is the goal for the whim and, uh, and loss and damage. Until now, like I've been like having experience and like get the knowledge from from uh, our colleagues. Uh, the thing is that when we are talking about setting or or raising public awareness and the capacity building for developing countries and to pick or uh, or to nominate one of the vocal points that followed all these matters, I think that we have to kind of easy the thing, easy the process and to understand uh, what we're talking about here. I think that to help or to uh, uh, to share what we are talking about to our society and our countries, I think that needs to be more uh, how to say it, more uh, sim to simplify what you're talking about. Uh, in the beginning, as I said, like I did not know what is the goal for this, uh, uh, for the whim, but now I understand that we need to share and we need to help the countries. But if we go to the uh, national level, I think that has to be uh, much more as I said, uh, simplify. Thank you. Thank you Don't so much. Um, thank you so much for that. That's an, an, an excellent point on which to stop, really, in that we did have some people to encourage the XCOM to communicate outputs in formats that are easy to translate, adapt, and access in different countries and by different users. So that point that you're making about simplification is important. And I'm glad to see that, you know, despite uh, the, the concerns or, or, or doubt that you had initially in terms of this loss and damage information, that you're seeing the, the value and importance of it now. So that's very much appreciated. And we look forward to continuing to work with everyone in terms of um, 
being able, as I said, to have that catalytic effect, being able to 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 um, get more, get more bang for your buck, more or less, um, in terms of trying to, to get the kinds of impacts that we want to have on the ground, to be able to make our people understand what this thing is about. I was going to try to, to summarize all of the rich inputs that, that you guys have made. We heard from Sumaya, and you heard from NASA, we heard from Khan, uh, uh, and also some input from the Paraguay um, 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 uh, consideration as well, specifically. We heard from Antonio as well. We heard from Farhan. We heard also from Donna. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to everyone to, to check the chat for Donna's intervention. Um, she spoke about some of the work of the Red Cross in the areas of capacity building. I'm only summarizing hers because you wouldn't have heard it. And knowledge sharing. Um, she spoke about the, the various elements, virtual amazing approaches. She spoke about targeted capacity strengthening in partnership. She spoke about the use of innovation. She spoke about a, a, a virtual, a 30 hour nonstop fully virtual event. OK, then Donna, wow, ambitious. Um, and a lot of in other information to so do check the chat for, for Donna's input. And we are really encouraging all of you to continue to submit to us, continue to, to, to send those um, um, inputs in. Okay, I, I'm seeing one more hand. I am, um, again, because this was largely an observer session, I am going to allow it, but this is truly, truly the last one, Hafiz. And Don, thank you so much. Just I will be very brief. I wanted to share that LDC and uh, uh, LDC initiative. You know, you know there is a LDC University Consortium um, that is working at this moment different uh, least developing countries universities. At this moment, they are conducting some case studies uh, in uh, some in nine countries. Uh, that for country studies focusing on the needs and also existing uh, approaches, policies, plans exist and what, what are the needs for policies, plans, also the financial needs. So those sort of need assessment, this sort of university consortium is very important. And I, I, I would like, I wanted to share this. This is an LDC initiative, which is Dr. Salim is leading. Uh, so um, this short of uh, networks needs to be guided from XCOM, how they would uh, promote the public education, also the awareness at the vulnerable countries. So um, and a Santiago network that can be a good platform um, to engage this short of university consortium. Uh, let me thank you so much. Thank you, Hafiz, um, very much for that. Um, I'm noting the, the information about the University Consortium, um, which again links very nicely with the point made by Antonio earlier on when he spoke about the curricula from developed countries um, that may be useful for a place that we need to look um, as a as a as, as a way to, to you know an option, a, a, you know collaboration, catalytic catalytic effect, and all of that. Now it sounds like I am not keeping my word by saying the last one and the last one and the last one, but there are no more hands other than. Zoha, can you tell me which organization you're from? Yes, hi, thank you. Sorry for coming in late. I'm Zoha from the Stockholm Environment Institute, and I just wanted to speak on behalf of Ringo, um, just since um, some of our work seems quite relevant here, and I just wanted to kind of re-emphasize our commitment um, to this work and state that all of us different different Ringo organizations are doing a lot of research that not only looks at climate impacts and kind of the physical aspects of loss and damage, but also kind of, you know, more social science aspects such as policies and measures and what kind of interventions are needed, limits to adaptation, loss and damage finance, and how it aligns with other aspects of climate policy as well. Um, and so we might also have knowledge products and information that is not only relevant to local communities, but also for example, policy uh, policymakers in these specific countries, in developing countries, um, that might help uh, enhance action to address, minimize, and avert loss and damage. So 
just wanted to quickly reemphasize our commitment to this and say that um, you know we'd be very keen to share any knowledge products that emerge out of this and keep the conversation going um, to ensure that there isn't a loss of communication here as well. Thank you. Thank you, um, Zoha, um, for that intervention made on behalf of Ringo's. Always appreciated. Thank you for pledging that commitment to continue to work with us and pointing us also in the direction of the policymakers, etc. I'm sure that the, the Secretariat has captured, um, even right now, I have quite a lot um, um, in terms of all of what you said, um, lots of relevant issues um, in terms of um, that, that, that you're doing, lots of relevant work um, that could have um, be useful in terms of relevant knowledge products to help the policy makers, etc. So thank you so much for that. Um, at this point, we do have quite a lot of, of, of feedback um, that we have received from you um, that we really appreciate. I, as I, I, I would have attempted to summarize, except it's a lot, so I won't. Um, to, but to note that we are noting the, the, the points made by members. We, we have Samaya, we have points by NASA, we have um, WWF from Cannes, uh, the, the, the input also raised during that intervention in terms of um, Paraguay. We have Antonio who came in, um, Fahan as well. Um, Donna, we did note your, your input in the chat. Jerome as well as Daniel and Nasser came back. Hafiz, thank you very much. Zoha on behalf of Ringo. And asking the Secretariat also to note some of those inputs that are coming in into, in the chat as well. But I'm really asking everyone um, to do, um, please, and, and I encourage you to make your submissions to the XCOM. We want to hear from you. What are you doing? What are you doing that um, that could help us in terms of partnering, in terms of doing that catalytic effect, in terms of the collaboration, in terms of helping us develop products and simplify them and, dissemin and disseminate them, in terms of being able to utilize the resources that you have to help us have greater outreach. Of course, all within whatever mandate that we have as the XCOM to do what we can do within the mandates. We always have to, to keep in mind those mandates. Um, so we are 15 minutes past the hour <laughs> that we were supposed to have ended. And I do thank you so much for all of those um, inputs, both members and, the ex and, and our valuable observers. And we really want to continue to hear from you. Um, at this point, uh, I want to say that we, we know that tomorrow, uh, the next and the last session of the XCOM, that, that would be tomorrow um, during for XCOM 12, and that will be from noon to um, 1400 CEST, the same time slot um, that we have today um, is, is what we will work with. Uh, so we are, we've gotten to an end of, of the day's session as an XCOM meeting. We will be meeting as an XCOM, uh, be a closed XCOM meeting at the point, and that is only because we need to be able to plan. You could appreciate that normally during XCOM, we have four days, potentially five days, depending, to be able to talk to each other for the full day from the morning till the evening. We end up staying very late to do the work. We we, we talk in the, in the you know, during the, the, the in, uh, lunchtime and breakfast time and dinner, and we are all in the same space in Bonn where we could have the conversations in the same time in the sp same space. We don't have this option and luxury. We have very limited time to our slots, <clears throat> and we are in different time zones. So it makes it very challenging to get it all done. So we're going to try to use the, uh, a little bit of time as an XCOM to try to prioritize and try to plan because we can't cover everything during those live sessions. And this is why we need the little space to allow us to do that planning and that prioritization and some of our intersessional work planning and making sure everybody knows what they're supposed to do and, and, and that kind of thing and, and, and clarify questions in, in that regard. So it's that kind of meeting that we will be having um, at this point in time. So I just wanted to explain that this is the intention and we're hoping that we will see all of you back here tomorrow with us uh, to be able to continue uh, the discussion where we'll be working on the recommendations of the XCOM report and, 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 and trying to have to close on the agenda items. Um, let me just see to remind myself. 
uh, um, tomorrow. Uh, that is the, the report of the EXCOM, but also the election of co-chairs. Yes, the election of co-chairs, uh, the organization of intersessional work, and of course, uh, any other business that comes up uh, prior to the closure of the meeting. So thank you so much to everyone and looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bye. Bye. Goodbye, Dawn. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Dawn.